There is some misconception about the front lever being mostly a core exercise, when in truth the bulk of the work is done by the back muscles, with the assistance of the deltoids and the triceps. There is of course an important core activation, but it is only secondary. From a biomechanical point of view, the front lever is a tight 3 lever, which is bad news for us because it means we are at a mechanical disadvantage as the effort is much larger than the load. The amount of effort you need to overcome the resistance also depends on the distance between the fulcrum and the center of mass. The greater the distance, the bigger the effort required. So the first requirement for the front lever is having a strong back. A good way to test this is through your pulling strength. If you can lift one and a half times your own body weight, or alternatively do 8 to 12 pull ups with an extra 30% of your body weight, you'll probably have enough strength for the front lever. So, if you weigh, for example, 160 pounds, you should be able to do at least one complete pull up with an extra 80 pounds, which means you're lifting a total of 240 pounds. Let's now have a look at different ways of progression. The first one only requires your own body weight. I'm not going through too much in detail here because you have probably seen this progression in other tutorials. The main concept behind this type of progression is to add resistance by gradually stretching the leg out, so to increase the distance between the fulcrum and your center of gravity. Remember, the more distance between the two, the harder the exercise will be. The first step is the tuck lever. Lift your hips, untuck your knees to your chest so you're half of your body length. By doing that, you're also reducing the effort by half. It is important here that you get your back straight and your hips well aligned with your shoulders before moving on in the progression. In the second step, you open up the position a little bit by getting your knees further away from your chest. Here also you must be able to keep your feet in line with your hips and shoulders. In the next exercise you stretch out a bit further to get to 3 quarters of the full body length. Remember here you have to start activating your core by squeezing your glutes and pushing your hips up. The last step before the full front lever is to stretch one leg while tucking the other knee to your chest. Here also you have to make sure your body is well aligned. The second method involves the assistance of resistance bands to remove some of the load. This is a way of progressing that I particularly like because it allows me from the very start to train in the exact same position as in the front lever. It requires a little bit of work for the setup, but once it's done it's very easy to implement. For this you'll need 4 resistance bands with carabiner ends and 3 ankle straps or pieces of rope. First. Attach a strap or a rope around the pull-up bar and make sure it's properly fixed and it's safe to use, as remember it will have to support all of your body weight. Then you take the resistance bands and pass them through the two other ankle straps and fix them to the strap attached to the bar. Once you've made sure it's safe, place your feet on each of the bottom straps, grab the bar and lift your hips and legs until you reach the horizontal position. If you still can keep your body horizontal, you can add one or more bands to decrease the load. Here, try to pay attention to the parts of your body that receive the most tension. Which muscle do you think there are more under stress? It is your lats, your shoulders, arms or your core. After that, the progression is pretty straightforward. As you improve your strength and your stability in the position, you will remove one elastic band each time until you will use just one band. Ideally, you should remove the band once you're able to hold the position for at least 15 seconds. If you feel you're still not ready for the full front lever, you can try instead of removing the bands altogether to place another one of lighter resistance. The third method requires a bit of a more complicated setup, but it is also the most precise of the three because it allows us to know exactly how much is left to reach our goal. It involves using a counterweight to support part of your body weight. The amount of assistance you're receiving equals the amount of weight you're using as a counterweight. For this you'll need a TRX or a suspension trainer, or you can also make your own by simply using a rope. 
You will also need a set of different weights. Hang the tier X from the bar and attach the weight on one side to the carabiner, leaving the other side hanging at approximately hip height. Lift the weight, making sure it's not swinging, otherwise it will cause you to swing as well, and place one foot to the loop end. Slowly raise yourself up while allowing the weight to come down. Don't rush it and make sure the weight doesn't move too much. Try to hold for about 10 to 15 seconds. Once you're comfortable with this, start using progressively lighter weights. Depending on your initial level, you can start for example by using a 45 pounds plate, then 33 pounds, 22, 11 pounds, 9 pounds and down to 4 pounds. I wouldn't bother using a 2 pounds plate as I think it's pointless because it won't be much of a difference. If you're able to do with 2 pounds you can probably do without anything at all. So what type of workout and which exercise you need to train for the front lever? There are 3 things you need to work on in order to achieve the front lever. The first as I mentioned before is strengthen the back muscles. Second is scapular stability and activation of the lower and mid trapecius. This will allow you to keep your trunk stable and in the horizontal position. And last, body alignment, which in this case it requires core strength and stability. The best exercise for strength in the upper posterior chain is pull-ups. In this case not just ordinary pull-ups but rather weighted pull-ups because the strength required for the front lever is higher than the strength required for just lifting your own body. So just doing pull-ups is not enough, as once you're able to do more than 15 repetitions then you're not developing pure strength anymore and your body starts to develop muscular endurance instead. Remember that you have to be able to lift one and a half of your own body weight. The other exercise I recommend is the straight arm pull down, because it involves the same kind of motion as the front lever, so it will trigger the same muscular pathways. Hang an elastic band of high resistance from a bar. And starting with the arms at chest height, you pull down while keeping your arms straight until you reach hip level. Once you're there, hold for 5 to 10 seconds and push your chest out. For scapular activation, this is a great and simple exercise, but not as easy as you think, especially if you have poor body control and awareness. Hang from the bar with your arms straight and try to pull yourself up without bending your arms. To do so, you must squeeze between your shoulder blades and tilt your head back and move your shoulder backwards while raising your chest towards the bar. As you progress and you gain more body control, start to increase your range of motion. You will notice you will be able to raise your chest and your hips further and further until you reach the horizontal position. As you can see here, I get to the point where my hips are nearly the same height as my shoulders, even though my legs are completely relaxed, so I'm not activating my core at all. The last exercise will help your body alignment. The dragon flag is also a great exercise for core strength. If you have a stall bar or anything you can hold on to, you can use it. But if you don't have access to a stall bar, you can do like me. Pile up a stack of weights, making sure the bottom weight is a little smaller so to allow you some space where to hold on to. Also make sure the pile of weights is heavier than yourself, otherwise it won't hold you down. Raise your hips and start in the vertical position where your shoulders are aligned to your legs and hips. Slowly lower your body down while keeping the same alignment. As your feet approach the ground, raise your body up again and keep as straight as possible. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed this and you find it useful, please like it, share it, leave your feedback and don't forget to subscribe to the channel.